This video shows you how to assemble the Eclipse box organizer. It should come with 27 total pieces. I like to use wood glue and apply a little bit of glue to the edges with a toothpick. You just want to be sure not to get too much on there or it'll squeeze out. So first we'll start by putting together the removable token tray. So it might be easiest to start with an edge piece. Okay. Anytime there's a notch on a piece of wood, I always apply the glue to the lower areas on either side of the notch. You can also use like white glue, that'll work just fine. Wood glue will hold a little bit better. But that's about how much that I put. I'll normally wipe the excess glue off of the toothpick and then use that to smooth out any glue that might have squeezed out so it's not globby. Okay, make sure you can see that. Alright, now the piece that has two slots at the bottom goes in the middle. It's the separator between the two sections because each section has a different depth for different size tokens. So. And the one with the lower notches are the outside here. So we want the ones with the higher notches for this side. centerpiece Do the other base, pick the best side for the top. Okay, now we can do the end. It's also not a bad idea to put down some newspaper or something so you don't glue to your table. But I don't really care about this table. These slots should be uniform so you shouldn't have to worry about which way you flip them. The same with, uh, with these dividers. It should be uniform so it doesn't matter which way it goes. Yeah. 
periodically check all of your joints and make sure nothing slipped or pushed out because if the glue dries that way then it's hard to get it back together and sometimes it shifts around while you're moving it and this glue dries pretty fast okay So that's what the piece looks like before we put the last end on it. So just make sure you have a deeper side with the many notches and then the empty slots in the middle and then another more shallow side with two notches. And the dividers that go in here have thinner tabs on the edge. The idea is that you should be able to put them in uh, and take them out later without having to glue them. They should just be able to pop in and stay. So we'll see if that actually works or if you have to actually put them in. But either way, these should have enough play for you to pop them in afterwards. So now we'll just put some glue on the end and put the last edge on. These you just have to start with one side and uh, go down, go down the side, working the pieces in one by one. But sometimes it doesn't fall into shape until you get everything kind of lined up or fall into place rather. There we have it. That's the little removable tray. I'll let this dry before uh, I try to pop in any of those dividers. Just put that off to the side. Now for the main box piece. The tall tabs here go on the left side of the box. That's to keep the player sheets from sliding around when they sit into the top of the box. So you can kind of lay these out the way they're supposed to go. And then you'll notice that out of all of these side pieces and dividers that are all the same width, there's one that's taller and that's the left side. The other ones go in the middle. And then there's also another piece here with a with a notch in it and that goes in the middle as well and then another little piece with a notch and that will go here so you should have two big sections this is where the hex tiles go and then a short section at the top is where the um, the turn cards go and the they look like a deck of cards but they're the thick pieces of cardboard that show the turn order and that sort of thing so you want the short piece up at the top. And then of the two dividers, the short one goes in the middle and the tall one goes on the top like this. So we'll go ahead and glue those down. Okay, so it kind of looks like this. The tall edges on the left should line up with the tall left side of the board. Okay, I'm back with the right piece. I actually grabbed a piece from two different sets. Notice they're identical. You should only have one of these in your set, not two. The other one looks just like it but the difference is it has two little notches on the bottom 
and the piece with the two notches is the one that goes at the bottom of the board. So that's the one we're going to glue right now. So glue that. The piece that should hold all this together looks like this. It's got three finger notch outs in it. And the notch on the bottom that goes halfway up intersects with this notch here. So actually, a better idea would have been to put that on first. But that's okay. This is my first time assembling one of these as well. So I don't have the sequence down perfect yet. Okay, so we'll glue that edge piece and then want to glue this edge piece away from the notch because that's what's going to go into the base that I already put there. I'll slide the bottom down. And again, probably should put this piece on before before the bottom like I did. So when this slides down, that'll pop in. And now the bottom that I place would have popped in a lot easier if I had done that first. Okay. Now we have a fairly secure piece there. Now we can flip this piece over and add the bottom supports, which will strengthen it a little bit, these two little pieces here. So there's not any really good glue areas, so I would just, um, they're going to go down like this. So I'll just put some glue in the little cracks. That should hold them. So they should slide right in there snug. There we go. So that's the bottom side. And that's the way it sits in the box. Now we can go ahead and add second divider. It's the one that has the finger hole at the top. So we can go ahead and put glue on the bottom of this one. We can go ahead and do one of these edge pieces while we have it like this. These two pieces here are rails to hold the top token pieces off of the bottom. They just act as a little ledge for it to sit on. So we'll put a little bit of glue on the end of this one. And then we can actually put some glue on the inside edge. and glue it to the other piece. So put some glue here that will go flat up against this side. Okay, so now it's all all the way down into the bottom and then we'll just make sure that the bottom lines up so that it's flush down here with the other piece. And then squeeze it together for a few seconds and let the glue start to stick. might take a little while, but as the glue gets tacky, you can go back and squeeze it again until it sticks or put some clamps on it or whatever you want to do. Alright, so now we should be able to put the top section on. So here's the top section, and again the big tab. Let me see. 
the big tab goes on the left just like everything else. It's going to go like this. So we can go ahead and put glue on all of our edges here. So I have some glue on the edge because I mistakenly glued it earlier when I thought it was the bottom, but that's how the piece fits in. And you can see the little rail pops in. Now all we have left to do is put the other rail in, that's the short piece, and then the edge. So I'll do the edge first. Just remember, stick the glue only in the recessed areas because the raised areas are what will be on the outside, so wouldn't do any good to glue it there. Glue almost always squeezes out from the corners. There's not really much you can do about that. Okay, let's try to flip it over. Oh, this is not going to hold too good until we get the rail on. I'm actually going to go ahead and put some glue on the inside here. Hold it. Okay. All right. Now we take the final rail and glue the lower areas. And find the ugly side. If there is an ugly side and put glue on that side. So, I actually think it makes sense to probably stick the rail in there first so that you don't wipe the glue off when you slide it down. Then when you stick the edge piece on, you can stick to the rail. There's not as many pieces to hold this edge in place uh, as the rest of the box, so if there's any one that you want to clamp, this would be the one to do it. Or just the weight of the box Oops. would be enough to do it. So if you set it, set it down on this side after you glue it, and let that sit for a few minutes, then you should be in good shape. But once this is in the box, it's going to be secure anyway, so you really don't have to worry about it too much. Just want to make sure it's kind of all snug, and this glue dries pretty fast. So there you have it. This is the completed box organizer. Now we'll get the box and show you how to put everything in it. Alrighty, so here's the game. I've already taken everything out of the box. This is Eclipse and the Rise of the Ancients expansion. So this should be everything. So we'll take the completed piece. Here it is. So the piece with all the dividers is on the left. I guess it really doesn't matter, but this is the way I put it together. And it should slide right down to the box. And it should be a pretty snug fit. But that's good. We want that. Hopefully if your pieces glued together tightly and you didn't leave any gaps. There we go. Alright. So this is what it looks like in the box. As you can see, there's really there should be no play in there at all. And on the left side, the tabs should line up with the top of the box. And then you have a notch all around the edge for the manuals later on. Okay, so the first thing we can put in are the hex tiles. And these go over here on the left hand side. So it's easier to get them in there a little bit at a time. And they go in with the with the point facing up and down. And they should also be snug. But if you drop them in there, they should just shake down. So you can kind of drop them and shake them a little bit. Okay, there we go. So the hex tiles are in there. And they're just about level with the top. There's a little bit of space in there. 
but not much. All right, now the uh, the turn cards that tell you the phases. These just drop in up here. There's a little bit of room in there. Oops, sorry. A little bit of room, but not a lot. Okay, so next we have the bags that contain the tokens. Truly really designed, the box is designed for you just to leave them in the bag. I didn't think it made sense for you to take them out to pack them and then every time you wanted to play, uh, have to put them back in the bags. So you just fold the bags up and they go into this little section here. And I guess these are the VP tokens. And they fit in there too. Now the top, little top slot up here, you've got options. You can stick um, the turn counters in there. You can stick the dice in there. It's really up to you. Or you can stick nothing in there. There should be enough room elsewhere in the box to put these things as well. But we'll go ahead and stick those in there for now. Okay, now we have the big open area. The bottom is where we stick the player tokens. Uh, again, I didn't think it made sense for these all to be individually organized inside the box. It would just take too much time to uh, sort them out and get them in these little slots and then have to fish them out. It's much easier to keep all of the tokens related to one player in a bag and then just hand those bags out before you play and then at the end of the game they can throw everything back in the bag so it really didn't make sense to um, divide those things up so the bags all fit down here there's room for nine I shake them down so they're pretty flat and I put uh, put two opposite each other like that and you can get six flat on the bottom then I take the other three and flatten them out as much as possible and just sort of stick them in the middle. And you should still have plenty of room in the bottom. It's not really a tight fit. You could stick other stuff down there, but it's really just designed for that. And so next we have the uh, completed token tray. So we'll go ahead and stick the dividers in here. Okay, I decided rather than have you watch me fumble with putting all these things in here that I would just get them in and then give you a tour of the token tray. So basically here's here's how I laid them out. You have a little bit of flexibility because you can move these dividers wherever you want but the way I initially laid it out was to have enough room for the colony ships if you put the divider in the very first slot. And then if you come over two slots, I don't know what these tokens are used for either, but they fit in here very nicely. <laughs> and then if you come over two more slots, then there's room for these tokens. Are these the ambassador tokens? I don't remember what these are for either, but they fit in there. There's a little bit of extra space in here, but they fit pretty good. And then your NPC, enemy, ancient ship, tokens all fit in the end and they are a little bit taller than uh, the height of this so they're sort of made to lean over a little bit so they don't stick up too high uh, then on the right hand side we've got uh, the other tokens here and like I said there's a little extra space in the middle but I didn't want to just stick extra dividers in there to make it tight now the ship upgrade tokens are pretty tight in the middle. There's a lot of these things. I may have actually kept some of the misprints in here that came from the first print run. I'm not sure if uh, some of these need to be thrown out. I can't remember. But uh, they're in there pretty tight and this is why we created the slots underneath. I don't want to flip it over because I'll dump all these out. But uh, you should have seen them earlier. And basically you can take your finger from underneath and you can you can push them up so that should help you remove them you can just push them up and grab them out uh, you may even be able to organize them in here by type uh, I'm not quite sure how everybody's gonna want to do this if they're gonna want to take them all out at the start of the game or if you want to keep them somewhat organized by type you can even stick little paper dividers but that might be a little bit OCD I'm sure some people will do that but by pushing them up with your finger it is kind of possible for you to read them if you were to get them 
oh, sorry about that. If you were to um, get them oriented the right way, you could tell what they are by pushing them up. So if you had them organized, you could probably just leave them in this tray and pull them out in the game um, as you need them. So it's kind of up to you. So we have the completed box and the token tray just slide sideways into the middle section and it's snug but it should have enough play to move around and it just slides on the rails there and then this divider you've got some finger holes and it fills the gap and it sits there so you have room for extra stuff for the big open space, you've got plenty of room for other accessories. We've printed out the turn counters uh, from Board Game Geek and had those laminated and those fit over here. If you have our resource trays, they fit very nicely in there. And we've also printed rules cheat sheets from Board Game Geek, and those fit uh, very nicely. Not that way, but that way. Now everything else goes on top, and the entire Eclipse game is ready to go. I'll show you how we can take some of the stuff out. It's pretty easy to get the top ones out just by sticking a finger into the corner, and then when you get down to the bottom ones, they lift out pretty easily too, but the little rails on the inside were also designed to be like a, a little teeter-totter. So if you can see this, if you push on one side, the other side flips up. So that can help you get the rest of them out. So they come out really easily. And that's about it. Once you get the hexes out, it's really easy to get these cards out. There's enough space in here. You can actually just get your fingers around them and just pull them right out. So everything should be very accessible with the nice little finger holes and you don't have to deal with a messy box anymore. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching this and as always, I appreciate your business. Take care.